All right, everyone ready? Okay. Ready? All right, so Coach Eck here, he'll, he'll start with the opening statement and then we'll move on to questions. Um, um, sorry. Sorry. Hi, Lola. Uh, all right, Coach Eck. All right, uh, just, just could not be more uh, proud of a group of guys, you know, players and coaches. Uh, you know, we, we had a bad taste in our mouth because we, we really felt uh, that last game before the bye week, you know, we, we didn't play the way we were capable to start the game and dug ourselves a deep hole. And, you know, I was proud of the resilience that even in that game we showed, well, we're not going to give up. We're going to keep fighting and punching back. And uh, an amazing plan, you know, credit to our whole coaching staff, uh, you know, especially our coordinators, Coach Arch and Coach Leister, to have a great plan. And that's a, I think that's a great team. You know, I, I think that's a very, a very, very good team. Uh, one of the best statistical offenses I've ever coached against. And uh, to put together the plan to hold them to whatever we did, 128 yards rushing, when they hadn't been under, only one team had kept them under 300 all year. Uh, so, so what a plan they put together. And then our players, uh, you know, I, th I thought the start, our first series wasn't quite what I wanted. But a after that, the first half, went as we wanted it to because I thought this team, uh, Montana State just hasn't been down a lot. You know, they hadn't been uh, in situations where they got down. And, uh, you know, that puts you in a little different mind state when you get down by 10 points. And then I knew they'd punch back. You know, great teams aren't going to lay down when you get a lead on them, and they certainly did. They did a great job of responding. And then the, the mental toughness our team uh, showed, you know, when they took the lead on us to come back and not be like, well, here we go again. You know, this team's great. They're going to come back. I, I just can't say enough about them. So very, very proud of our guys. It was a very gutsy effort against a team who's a great team. That team's going to go far in the playoffs. Uh, can't say enough about our, our team. Just so proud of them. And our crowd, I want, I want to compliment our crowd. Our crowd was amazing. I think they had an impact in the game. Um, to have two sellouts in a row. You know, the first game I was here against Drake, our opener last year, our home opener, we had about 5,000 people in the stands. So to see how our fans have rallied around this team, and uh, I'm going to keep pitching. We need, we need them here for our last home game against Idaho State as well. So open up the questions. What's the best of the bad taste in the last matchup? I mean, what's that like, Solver, and if you're Awesome. Just just loved it. You know, and again, you talk about the two weeks ago, the depths of the depths, watching their coach dance on our field and then uh, coming back and seeing our players celebrate and the joy in their eye. And, uh, you know, again, I, I, I give them all the credit. They, they did a great job. I coached them a little better than I did, I did against Montana. I didn't have them ready, but they, they followed the plan that we laid out to a T uh, these last two weeks. And uh, uh, to see a game like that in the Kibbe Dome uh, to beat the number two team in the nation, awesome. I, I think so. I think both teams did a good job of like attacking matchups. You know, I think we, they both teams did a good job of trying to see, you know, how we could get. You know, they, they have some injuries. We have some injuries, and uh, you know, I think that that became key is just trying to find our good matchups. You know, we got, uh, you know, uh, JJ on a deep pass in the first half that you know must have went for uh, 30 yards. That uh, you know was on their nickel, who's their backup nickel. Their starters out, and then they they got some hits on us late when we had some you know backups in the game and had some good stuff good up. Uh, but, uh, you know, both teams have very good quarterbacks. Both teams have great offensive coordinators. And, you know, I think we kind of dialed into what the game plan was. But that, that's Vandal football, man. You know, four, 40 minutes time of possession, keeping the ball away from them. Uh, I liked how aggressive we were. Uh, you know, again, we were three or four on fourth down, and we're going to live and die. You know, people want to question it. That's who we are. That's our fabric. So we were aggressive. I thought our defense did a good job. We were more aggressive. You know, typically, um, you know, Montana State, they built it up, and I'd like to be at the point where we could just be a lot of four-man rush and mix coverages and, and stop people. Uh, I felt we had to, had to mix it up more against this team. We couldn't. And, like, one of the long passes they had was something good up against our base defense. But I'm sure we played the least base defense we did all year this year because I knew that was such a good offense. You can't just defend them playing what they think you're going to be in. you got to keep them off guard. And uh, Coach Arch called a great game and uh, kept them off guard. Uh, and... Uh, you know, again, you make a team like that who wants to run the ball so much, have to beat you in a two-minute drive. Uh, it was great to keep them, you know, out of you know, and without a touchdown. Number one, because that's the worst-case scenario is to give up a touchdown in the situation and, and lose the game. Uh, you know, we were a little bit going back and forth what we should do with our timeouts. You know, I knew their kicker had missed some kicks, so I, I you know, I didn't want to. You know, so I kind of decided hey, until they got really look close. You know, inside the, you know, 15 or something, I wasn't going to use the timeouts and try to force them to kick a field goal and uh, it worked out. We know the 
I, 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 you know, I haven't seen every quarterback, so it's tough for me to like judge. But I, I can't believe there's another quarterback in FCS football better than Giovanni McCoy. And uh, we still got to keep better. You know, we, we played six old linemen in this game. Five of them are, are freshmen or sophomores. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, we started three true freshmen on defense today, and in, in that performance. So uh, the future's bright for Idaho football, and uh, we got to keep, you know, protecting Bonnie better. You know, again, it was better than last week, giving up six sacks, but I think we had four in the first half. Now credit, I don't think we gave up any sacks in the second half. But that throw he made, it was pretty well covered. They had two defenders there, and he threaded it right through, and uh, an amazing, amazing play. And then Therese Trainer, I can't say enough about him. I'm so proud uh, of him. You know, he had five big catches in the game. They were all like third and fourth down conversions. The one ball was a little low. It was probably around his ankles, and Therese is like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, for him to go down and uh, get that. Uh, he's a playmaker, and he's a guy who uh, I've just been so proud of his, his growth as a person since we've been here with kind of getting his life in order and coming on, and to have him play so well in a big game is awesome to see. Another impact player, uh, Nick Romano, running back, uh, what can you say about kind of the opportunities he created today? He seemed like he had quite a bit of touches as well. Yeah, 10 carries for 4.3, and you, you saw it. You know, we had uh, 30 carries by the tailback today, which is what we want. You know, last week when we got behind, we had about you know, 15, 16 tailback runs. Uh, we we want to run the ball. We want to you know play keep away from especially a team whose offense is as good as Montana State. Uh, but Romano's tough, runs hard. Woodsy had a few things that got nicked up on today, uh, but we got him 20 touches. I told her he probably had a couple catches too. He had 23 touches. I told him you know that's something I, I talked to their offensive staff about is we have to get Anthony Woods the ball. You know he didn't you know last week when we weren't running it, uh, we threw him three passes today. So that was great to get him that because good things happen when Anthony gets the ball too. The probably an underrated play in the game is when you know we got a call for uh, a penalty and got us first and 25. You know Woodsy gets like a 13 yard gain on a swing pass that gets us back to more manageable because you know against that defense you don't want to be second and 25, third and 25. Uh, so just, just so, so many guys stepped up today. Romano ran his, his tail off. Thought the O line responded and then the D line I thought probably you know without watching the tape I'm pretty sure it was their best game of the year to hold a rushing attack like that to 120 yards rushing. Yeah, you know, I just think we got back to basics, you know, and again, I, I think I did a poor job coaching us in the last game, you know, getting too caught up in things and caught up in, you know, uh, you know, being on ESPN2 and the crowd and, uh, you know, playoff implications, you know, this, this week we really just focused on the next play and being physical as hell because this is a physical team playing hard as hell and, uh, I, I think the guys just did a great job of uh, buying into that. But we, we had a lot of good versus good work on our bye week, our one offense versus our one defense to work on that physical play. And uh, just so plow, proud of the way. If they followed the plan to a T, they couldn't have been a more coachable group than they were these last two weeks. Tommy's a good tackler, and he's, uh, you know, he's a uh, – you know, this is a game that like Tommy loves to play in. You know, Tommy'd rather be downhill as a safety and tackling and being physical than, you know, covering ten personnel and four wides all day. So I think he was probably licking his chops all week to have a game like this. Uh, I thought X Ray Alexander played tremendous as a true freshman. It was his first start in this setting. I thought he made you know, he just makes a lot of plays. You know, he screws up a few things, but that's freshmen do that, but he makes a lot of plays. I thought Dallas Afalava gave their left guard a lot of problems getting in the backfield and was tough to block as a true freshman in this environment. Uh, you know, just couldn't couldn't be prouder of our guys. Coach, they tried Armani on three times on that last drive, and he was able to stand tall. What can you say they, about they, they, they tried Armani all game. Armani made some great plays earlier, man. I, I Armani's playing really well. I think, you know, pro football focus, which grades players, it has him as a, maybe, if not the, the number one guy, your highest ranked guy in our defense, but number two. And uh, he was another young guy, another redshirt freshman. He was the fourth freshman. He's a redshirt that started on defense today. And uh, he rised up, you know, and, uh, you know, Marcus kind of came into the year as preseason all-conference and things. So sometimes that leads other teams to try to attack your other corner. But he, he's answered the bell all year, and I've been so uh, impressed just with his growth as a player and just as a person. You know, I think he's got, like, straight A's right now. He's taking care of his business off the field. And, uh, you know, him and Woodsy are roommates. Him and Anthony Woods have an apartment off campus and, you know, kind of keep each other on the right track and in order. And, uh so proud of Armani. What a, what a performance by him. I don't know if he gave up, you know, he didn't give up any big balls, but they tried him a few times in the first half on deep balls, too. Your offense did not allow a single first out until late in the second quarter. Why were they clicking on all cylinders, especially in the first half? Well, I think it was just great execution of our plan. You know, we, uh, we got some three and outs. Uh, the original plan we had was to go down, take the ball, which I think I made a mistake the last game deferring. Uh, but go down and score, which we didn't. We went three and out. 
But uh, the defense got the stop anyway. But then we went down and scored. Then we scored, got a stop. Then we scored again. Uh, and you can just put this team in a little bit unfamiliar territory, uh, which they hadn't been in. And now you're hoping kind of when you get down that they might press and turn over the ball. I don't think there's there no turnovers in this game, right, either side? So uh, great fix by us. That's, that's a win for us to be you know, even because uh, you know, we were, I think, you know, minus coming in and they were plus. So uh, tremendous job by our offense against a really good defense, not having any turnovers and you know, something we still got to work on on defense, creating more. But uh, uh, defense, it was, it was a great plan and great execution of the plan of guys just doing their job and executing. Coach, I know this team has lofty aspirations this year, but can you kind of wrap your head about, around being here in year two and you just knocked off the second ranked team at home, a top 10 matchup, just how far this, this team has come to this point? Very proud. And again, we, we knocked off the number two team last year. I think Montana was number two, but we had to take a four hour bus ride afterwards. So this is a lot more fun to be able to celebrate right away with everybody after you win at home and have the crowd here. But uh, no, we've come, you know, just, you know, I, I had so much respect, you know, for the football programs at, at Montana State and Montana. And, uh, you know, to be, you, know, you like to win every game, but to say we're two and one against those schools in our first two years, I probably would have taken that the day I got hired, you know. So, uh, Tremendous, and again, I, I think the future is bright. We're going to keep building this and making it and making it better. What, what's, what's this win do for you now as you go in the last three I learned my lesson a little bit. We're, you know what it means? We got to have a great practice on Tuesday, and we got to get better as a team and focus on the next play and not get ahead of ourselves. We got to make sure we stay right there, and uh, uh, that's all I'm worried about is uh, correcting things we screwed up today because it wasn't all beautiful. Get that fixed, and then have a great practice on Tuesday. You're a great teacher, great instructor. I'll tell a little story. So, so I was at my radio show before the Montana game, and like a uh, you know a student, uh, uh, you know, kind of said, "Hey, you know, is this the kind of win you'd rush the field for?" I said, "I, I, said, I don't know. It'd be a big win, uh, all that." And then, like, the director of ops told me like two days later, "Yeah, that uh, yeah, they got an email that Coach X encouraging fans to rush the field." So I, I learned my lesson right away. I don't say you know, no comment on that. No comment. Right, I don't. Thanks, I don't want games management in bad places. <laughs> Any last ones? Everyone good? Thanks, thanks. Appreciate thanks, you guys. Coach. We got. We've got three players. What was um, the last interview you said no comment? Never. <laughs> <laughs> but I I, I. I. I don't want to get emails. You know. <laughs> I, 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 no comment has pretty good. Comment. I like our administration. I want to stay on the president's good side. You know, I might ask him for a raise someday. So I want to be down with this. <laughs> Good, how are you doing? All right, first uh, first one against Montana State since 2016. First FCS, first FCS win over Montana State since, 2000, or since 1994. Um, you guys know who these guys are. Uh, go ahead and uh, shoot questions for everybody else. Monty, can you tell me about the touchdown throw? Um, the touchdown throw, uh, we had both uh, talked uh, right before that play, and he just told me to just uh, give him a chance. And that's exactly all I did. I just uh, gave him a chance, and he just went and made a great play like he always does. And that's all it was. It was just a fantastic catch by Hayden. So, Was there a window, or did you just throw it to him? Um, I kind of tried to throw it to, to his back shoulder. And then, um, and then the same thing I just said, he just made – a great catch, and he kind of just turned and and just um, adjusted with it. So it was just a great catch. Well, I, I'm gonna jump in on that. It was a great ball. I mean, I think it was cover two. You could tell it was cover two, but they played like a, it was almost like a two man. So the guy, instead of staying in the flat, dropped with me, which allowed Bonnie to put that back shoulder ball on me. So it it didn't even that middle safety didn't even come into play because he was on the other side of the guy, and the guy followed me man. So it like. As much as it was double coverage, it was still like it was a perfect ball to keep it away from the other guy and the, the safety coming from the middle. And you know, when you have a guy like that who can throw the ball there, you just got to execute. Did you think it was coming to you? I mean, were you like, as you're going through, it's coming to me, or do you think there's two guys you throwing it somewhere? Else? I was praying it was coming to me. <laughs> <laughs> Prayers answered. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted it to come to me. And, uh, yeah. Thank you for giving me a chance. Thank right? you for the last two weeks. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a huge mental adjustment when it comes off of like a like a loss that we had, you know. And it, um, 
but you know we have a great coaching staff we have a lot of belief in our in our coaches as players and they have a lot of belief in us and you know they do a great job of you know taking the emotions out of the game as much as possible and you know football is such an emotional game it's hard not to get caught up in in the, the lights and people yelling at you and you know you're talking to people they're talking back to you but you just have to kind of ignore the noise and ignore the media too you know it's it's so important to stay you know level-headed stay within the team and you know I'm so proud of the guys and so proud of the way we fought you know the defense came out and just absolutely killed it they did their thing um, you know that stop at the end of the game huge that you know making them kick a what was it 44 yarder instead of a 30 four yarder is, is just it's huge and so you know so proud of the way everybody fought so proud of the defense so proud of our coaches and you know it's a great great vandal w like i like to say considering what happened two weeks ago what's it like to win this game um it's it's huge you know this puts us right back in the driver's seat this puts us where we want to be and you know we're gonna keep taking it one seat at a time one one week at a time but you know continue playing vandal football um, this is just a very big win for us. Uh, um, you know, and just the just the same thing that, that Hayden just said. Uh, this just puts us right back in the spot where where we wanted to be. Um, and this is just a great uh, game just to just to uh, bounce back off of our last game. So um, yeah, so um, it's just a great win for us, and it just feels good. Um, um, that was uh, very um, just important. I mean, uh, just to keep our defense off the field and just to uh, just to give those guys some rest. But uh, with that being said, though, um, I would just say uh, that's just all thanks just to our great um, game plan that we have for this week, just on both sides of the ball. Uh, but then just especially um, on the offensive side of the ball too. You know, um, Coach Slice came up with a great game plan, um, and and it worked well for us. So. Um, to be honest, um, I would just say that uh, um, it's just thanks just to like all all of my teammates, all of the guys that are just, that are just all around me, uh, just day in and day out. You know, uh, they just uh, keep me up if I'm down or down a tad bit if I'm too up. So you know, um, and then just uh, guys like this who just uh, who just will uh, just go out and just make plays, just uh, play after play. Um, it just uh, makes my job a lot uh, easier, too, for sure. So um, I would just say, uh, you know, just all these these uh, great guys around me helps a lot for real. And we just all feed off each other. And um, it just this is a very big win um, just for our program, I would say. So it feels really good. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was, Man, yeah. shut up. So Mally had the sack on the, on the last drive for those dogs. So t take us through that. They moved the ball <laughs> pretty good. He's down in there, but then you guys came up with multiple sacks with some fists to keep both the game. Yeah, it was just kind of hard to, like, I was sitting on the sideline. I'm being limited on reps, so it was kind of hard uh, watching the guys out there knowing I can be able to make an impact. So when I got my opportunity, I was able to rise the occasion. So be able to make a play and uh, celebrate with Dallas and the rest of the defense. and. And I just thought it was very important because, you know, that was after probably the last chance to be able to do something like that. And while TSA's State's quarterbacks are so key to that run game, how are you able, especially number four, how are you able to contain them? Uh, we just uh, try to uh, make sure we keep them inside the pocket and not let them extend plays. And, and uh, when he steps up, be able to collapse the gaps and, and, and uh, close down on the sack for him. Was there a sense when you guys went back out after the touchdown from that last drive that if we get a stop, we're going to win this game? Oh, absolutely. Like That was the only thing we were going through our head. And we, uh, As soon as we saw that touchdown, we knew what we had to do, and we knew that we had to uh, pour it all out on the field. So just got to give credit to these guys for going and delivering so we could finish the touch. How would you describe the energy the defense came out with today? Because you guys didn't even give up a Montana State push down until late in the second quarter. Yeah, so we just our our uh, mindset was being a lot more physical and playing more fast and trusting our, our physicality and, and being able to uh, execute the stunts and uh, calls well. So being able to go out there and, and step and 
be one out of, uh, out of 11 just keeps us uh, uh, level-headed and understand that trust the guy next to us, uh, things are going to go our way. For you the offensive guys, how crucial in the game plan was it, especially early with milking the clock and keeping their, their offense sideline and kind of cold? Do you feel like that, that kind of fed into a little bit of their offensive inconsistencies, just how you guys were able to kind of mark down field and put together the length of first drive there? Um, you know, I think uh, I think that's something that just as crazy as it sounds, it just kind of happens. You know, like like we could go into the game and you could have a game plan like, oh, we're gonna pound the ball on them or we're gonna we're gonna throw the ball all over these guys, you know, and uh, and so quickly in the games you see things that start working and you're like, hey, let's let's keep doing that. And so um, that long that prolonged drive just happened with with. Coach Slice calling plays that, you know, we were – you pick up three yards every play, you're going to get a first down on four downs every time. Like, just math, right? So, so you – when we – when that's working, it's like, hey, what, let's not go away from this. You know, our defense only played 22 plays of defense in the first half, and I think their last drive had – I think it was like an eight-play last drive or something. So, like, that's a – if you do that, you keep the – because they have a lot of great – Offensive players, you keep those guys off the field. You keep our offense on the field. Just, just churn and you know. Again, it's one of those things that happened, and you know we executed well the first half, and you know that's a big reason of why we won that game was the first half. Hey, I want to ask you about the existing last two games, having this place sold out, and then just comparing and contrasting what it's like to come out on the winning side and then celebrate on the field in front of this crowd. Oh, it's oh, you wouldn't believe me. It's a lot better. <laughs> You'd rather do it. I, I promise you. You should try it for yourself. Um, yeah, you, it, it feels a lot better when you win. And uh, you know, I got a lot of people, um, friends and family here. Got a couple of best friends back from Arizona who've never been to a Vandal game before, and they came here now today. And so it's just, you know, it's awesome to to be able to celebrate with those guys, and you know, hopefully put on a good costume tonight for Halloween weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to, so I'm going as Archer from Sterling Archer. If, you, if you've ever seen that, and then my girlfriend's going as Lana. So it's a nice little couples costume. We'll see. Lonnie, are you dressing up this Halloween? Or um, I currently don't have a costume right now, but um, but I'm a, I might run over to the costume store and try to find me something real quick. But <laughs> but yeah, but I'll see about that. So we'll see how that goes. And. Uh, a little throwback, me and my girlfriend will be uh, Freddie and Daphne. Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks.